moving now onto the transmitter of the Mustang CB1000, which uses the Cybernet PMA 002F chassis, like it does in the Amstrad and the Transcom and the Fidelity 2001. We'll now move over to the transmitter, having shown you how the VCO is set. I've got the test set on the other camera, and uh, I'll have that on the 4 watt, the 30 watt range. We'll just switch that camera on for you. See if we can just uh, get that low enough to show you two things at once. But I'm going to put the attenuator on. I think we'll get more accuracy. And the 10 decibel attenuator is on the back inconveniently on these sets. So we'll start again with T2, T3, T4. L4 We'll go back to full power now Drops tool in the radio and then finally we're looking at L8 and L8 Just gonna have to ease that off, so I'll just pause the video. Resuming, having added, put some heat onto the wax in the coil of L8, we'll now proceed to adjust that. And we're looking for four watts. And it is achieving that. So that's uh, set the transmitter, it's doing 4 watts, that's what we wanted to find out and we will now set the frequency. I'll just switch back to the normal picture and you can see where we're going with that. Now unusually it's a coil for the frequency on this chassis which is there, it's L2. So I'm looking on channel 20 for 27.79125. I've got 2779108, so it's dropped down, which is quite normal. And that's brought that on frequency. Only just though, uh, 27791222, as the crystals age, they drop with uh, the frequency drops, so that's something to watch for if you can't ever trim it up, the crystal needs replacing. But considering these are now 30 years old, I think they're doing pretty well. Setting the transmit power meter, I'm going to transmit. I want to go on full power. And the meter is supposed to be into the centre of the red zone. So that's using RV1. And I have the meter now in the centre of the red zone. Can't really see that. Right, the next thing to do is the deviation. On these radios, it's RV3. I'll just get the little oscillator out. Where have I put that? showing over the top now it's supposed to, maximum deviation is supposed to be two and a half and that's uh, currently reading something like three so it's RV3 I'll drop that to two and a half just give it the whistle test <whistles> wallow 
Gucci, that's less sensitive than I would hope, so we'll just go back to it. That's more like. And that set the transmitter. Now, for Chris, if your S meter isn't reading the RF, there aren't actually that many parts which are involved. There's only, in fact, a diode as it sniffs off the RF. And I'll just look at the circuit diagram here. Now, this is, as I say, this manual's for the Amstrad. But before it disappears off to the biograph driver chip, let's just uh, zoom in on this for you. And you can get yourself a, a copy of the manual. I've posted one of the Amstrad 901 on uh, the scribed site, and there's plenty of other people who have uploaded them. And the only difference is that your meter doesn't have your version doesn't have this BA656 biograph driver. So as it comes. Uh, on receive, it goes through this diode, which is diode 13, to the RV2 preset, and then into your meter. On the transmitter, it's driven by, I think, that, what's that, so I get my magnifying glass, diode 8. Then it goes to RV1 and to your meter. So that's, that's all there is. On the transmitter, it's diode 8 to your meter. On the receiver... It's diode 13 via the preset T meter. Once you get the receiver actually working, and say you've got, you've got the uh, LS 1230 um, subsystem chip, otherwise you'll have to go through the voltages on the receive side of your transistors, and they're in the voltage chart in the service manual. You'll soon be able to find that fault if it isn't the uh, if it isn't about the, the uh, LA uh, 1230. Right, that concludes the transmitter. Now we'll move over to the receiver on another recording.